It's not too late to do that, though. I'm not in here. I All didn't right. have joint meeting yet. Oh, uh, oh there refresh. Refresh. I got yeah. it. Okay. Okay. All right, this is the personnel committee meeting on November 28th. President, our members Hutchinson, Johnson, Burnett, and Galvin. I'll entertain a motion on the agenda. So move. Second. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve it. All those in favor say aye. 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 And that passes unanimously. And the minutes? Move to approve. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 And that passes mm -hmm. unanimously. On the regular business, for consideration with possible action, and a request to fill the following positions and all subsequent vacancies resulting from internal transfers. We'll take these one at a time. Uh, item A, science worker, four person. Move to approve. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Item, well, I think it should be B, but it's... Should be B. Okay, yeah. you guys are just testing me. Parks <laughs> maintenance worker. Move to approve. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 And that aye. passes unanimously. Item C, police and fire positions. Move to approve. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 And that passes unanimously. Item D, support assistant. Move to approve. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 And that passes aye. unanimously. And the last item E, administrative clerk. Move to approve. Second. All those in favor Test say aye. <laughs> aye. Aye. And that passes unanimously. On item number two, for consideration with possible action on the request to amend chapter eight of the personnel policies to allow for a 2% increase for those in the performance range of the pay plan effective January 1, 2024. Staff. So you have in the packet the policy revision. Uh, this is based upon what was changed in the, the budget with the new pay plan to have every employee that's in the performance range to have a 2% increase across the board. So if an employee, whether you're exempt or not exempt, uh, meets expectations in your annual review, you'll get a 2% increase in the performance range. So that's what the policy change reflects. Are we just not going to acknowledge that mustache? <laughs> 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 Oh no, I think I it was a <laughs> 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 Holy cow. We reviewed it too, so I, that, that works for me. <laughs> Wait, are we still on the mustache? Yeah. No, we're on number two. <laughs> Second the mustache. Yeah. The meetings right. are going to be short, they may as well be fun. Yeah, that's true. Just like the budget. Yeah, that's true. All right, so do I have a motion? Move to approve. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 And that passes unanimously. Uh, for consideration with possible action and proposed compensation for the position of mayor starting in the mayor's next term. So in the packet you have um, the research and evaluation that Carlson Detman sent to us. Um, so Carlson Detman, what they did was they tried using, or they did use pretty much the same formula that we use for employees and tried to keep it as consistent with that. Um, so you'll see, you know, the 25th percentile, the 50th percentile, and the 75th percentile. And then you have the comparables that they used. And I believe these comparables are the same ones that we have used in the past and uh, previous years. Um, but this is what they came up with um, for the recommendation. And then also keep in mind that the term, I believe, for the mayor would start in 2027. Um, so this is kind of be data that would be reflected this year. So you want to keep in mind what the salary should be um, three years from now. So. Alder Johnson. Yeah, just a couple of questions, Joe. So uh, one is the time sensitivity on this. Uh, not there, right? Like we've got really as long as the, a vote is taken prior to the start of the term or like what, what is the last date that we can take action on this? I believe it would be... Um, the, the last day you can um, make a decision would have to be before December 1st of 2026. Okay, so plenty of time. Yeah. Yep. Okay, and I just want to make sure we're not rushing this because I, I do want to be very thoughtful and deliberative about the way that we contemplate this. Um, you know, I, I do think for really the CEO of the city, I want to make sure that we're attracting the right talent to put their name on that ballot and acknowledging that mayor of a city this size does require a certain level of experience and skill set that is, is really not possessed by many people um you know the other 
component of this, Joe, and you and I chatted about this a little bit. Two things. So one is, um, are all of these comps strong mayor systems? Are any of these weak mayor systems? Off the top of my head, I couldn't give you an answer on that, but okay. I think, if I remember correctly, I think they're mostly strong mayor systems. Okay, because I, I, there's a huge difference there, yes. right? And, yeah. and so I would, personally, I'd actually like, if it's if Carlson Detman has this, I'd actually like to see spreadsheet with these individually listed rather than an aggregate. Um, the other thing that I would like to see um, is data surrounding chief administrative officers, right? So if you have someone who is a city manager, for example, of the village of Bellevue, village of Alloway, Schwabenon, right? They're, they're running the day-to-day -day operations of those municipalities in an equivalent manner that the mayor of Green Bay is expected to. And, and I, I think that there is, um, I, I'd like to see, I guess, some comps around some of that as well. And recognizing that there's no rush to take action on this, I, I think it's good for us to have more information than less right now. And I know I, I've, I, I've Google searched this before and have found studies, uh, you know, so I'm sure Carlson Detman could probably get their hands on something that's probably even more comprehensive than what I found. So th those are just a couple of things that just I observed. But. Anyone else? Uh, Alder Burnett. Yeah, I think um, timing is important, but to get the facts, you know, if you, we had considered this right on the eve of the mayor's uh, election this last yeah. term, and the mayor publicly this mayor publicly stated that he would veto the decision of the council leading up to the election. So the goal is at what time would the decision be made by the council at that time to remove the politics from the decision, especially if the current mayor were to run again. Mm -hmm. And we shouldn't always make decisions based on who's in office. So to back that decision up, maybe six months to a year before the election, I think that that would be preferable. Yeah, it's a great suggestion. But I won't be there, so what do I care? No, it's just, <laughs> that's and for it's, the future council to decide. And, and, and is it within our policy discretion to index the salary, like automatically? Can we do that? I believe we can, yeah. So if we, it, hypothetically, right, if we set, here's the new base, and then it just automatically indexes unless council overrides it or makes a different decision? Yep, that's what it is. And I, and I think the thought too was when we had the municipal judge and then the common council salaries and mayor salary at the same time, I think that was the, the purpose for this, but delaying it to get more information. Was on yeah. And again, I, I, I don't know that I want to index it. I just, I just want to know that it's possible. It is possible. I, and I, I agree with Wadey. I mean, I was the one that pushed this and wanted to get it done before the election, but I understand now that put pressure on the current mayor as we were moving into it. But this is something else, too. I mean, I've uh, done a lot of research into city managers, and I, I think there's some advantages to that uh, compared to what we have right now, but, but it seems like Green Bay is set on the, what we're following for our, our government. And, I, and I'm also fine with that. But I think we need to, when we look at some of these other communities that are listed here, I think what's required of the mayor of Green Bay is, is vastly different than what's required, say, director DPW, fire department, police department, compared to other communities are, that are listed here. I think there's a lot more going on in Green Bay, a lot more responsibility. Uh, it's always been my impression that this is a job that is not an eight hour a day job. It's seven days a week um, and you got a lot of irons in the fire a lot more than you do in some of these smaller communities so i agree with alder johnson i think some more research into this would be warranted i think it would help us uh, making a decision down the road but I, I think we need to make that decision well before the next election cycle is coming up i'm, I'm hoping that this and like uh, alder burnett said take it the politics out of it which is what was happening in the past makes it fair, and I think it will hopefully uh, attract good quality candidates who want to put themselves through the misery of running for for this elected spot, knowing that in four years they could be out of a job. So 
Um, I'm, I, I agree. I, I think uh, you know, if we get a motion to send it back to committee, uh, that'd be the right way to go on this. Yeah, the I mean, staff. Or the staff. staff. Yeah, yeah so the first staff. And you know, noting Joe, obviously the couple of things that committees requested. Yep. And however long it takes to gather that data. First staff. Second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 And that passes unanimously. On to report of routine personal action items. Um, I've had a request to open the floor for comments. So I'll make a motion to open the floor. Second. Second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 And that passes unanimously. Although you probably don't need to be introduced anymore. You well, know, the yeah, just for the record. Yeah. Mark Berglund, 806 North Broadway. Yeah, you didn't think you'd ever see me again, right? <laughs> Got your address memorized. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah. Um, you know, and, and, and part of your meeting always is, is the routine personnel actions, you know, which is uh, the new hires, uh, the, the people that have left. Uh, but what I was kind of focusing on is the step grade changes. And in this package, you have 82 total step grade changes. Uh, and obviously that number's up there a little bit because uh, it's been two months, you know. Normally you have two committee meetings a month. Sometimes there's only one a month. Uh, I went through the last years, this, this whole last year's committee meetings and added up a bunch of numbers just to try to get some facts and numbers together. And I'm just trying to bring a little awareness here. But anyway. Uh, so you've got 82 total step grade changes in this package today. Uh, you've got one or maybe two more personnel meetings this year, I think. So those numbers are probably going to go up uh, because it probably does not have all the December people in there. Uh, of these 82, uh, and actually I had to add in a couple because they, they got some... Uh, when you look through the dates on them, I think there was some people in September that were due for a step grade range uh, advancement in December 1. So anyway, uh, December 1, you've got 48 step grade changes. And uh, what I believe, uh, unless somebody actually was hired on December 1, uh, what I believe is all of these are the long-term people that you have. You know, all the people that have been here since before the uh, last uh, wage study. It's all your long-term, most experienced people, and that's 48 out of 82 this month, or, or this time around. And uh, so, to put the rest of the year in context, uh, and these are all 2023 numbers, and uh, like I say, some months you had two meetings, but I added up the numbers, so, you know, January you've got 38, February is 18, March is 10, April was 58. Uh, but what I did notice is a lot of that was police and fire. Probably half of that was police and fire. Um, so I think that they did a bunch of hiring in that particular month. You know, May you've got 14, June 17, July is 40, August is 15, September is 13. So, you know, you've got a lot of guys mostly your long-term guys, 48 of them, and like I say, that number may change because you've got a couple of meetings coming up, that have to wait till next December for their step grade change. Uh, which, you know, and I'm not trying to beat a dead horse here, but in previous meetings I have said that, how, you know, it, it is said that everybody's gonna be getting 5%, but right here you've got 48 of your long-term most experienced people that have to wait for another year to get their step grade change. And then of course, if you start looking at, you know, January, February, March, uh, between those three months, you've got uh, 66 people right there. They are going to get their step grade raise before the 2% COLA kicks in on April 1. Whereas everybody else will get the 2% and then we will have to wait another, you know, six, seven, eight months to get our step grade. So it just seems to me that your, your long-term most experienced people have to 
wait at the end of the line to get their pay increase. So, and, and I know that they've discussed that at, at, at council and they may look at it and, and I understand all of that. And, uh, you know, uh, I've just got some other notes here. Like, the way I always look at things is you've got to identify a problem if you have one. First, do you have a problem? And then you identify the problem. And I think this is an issue that probably needs to be looked at. You know, all your long-term guys are having to wait till the end of the year. Then, uh, after you identify a problem, you need to bring awareness, which is exactly what I'm doing right now. I'm just trying to get some numbers together, trying to uh, get a little awareness of the fact that, you know, a lot of people got to wait till the end of the year. And then, of course, there's always the resolution part after you've identified the problem, which I understand always comes down to funds, you know, uh, where you're going to get the funds to do whatever you want to do. Uh, and from going to all these meetings and listening, that always seems to be the underlying factor to everything. You know, everybody always wants to get everything, everybody always wants to do things, but it comes down to we've only got so much money, you've only got so much funds. If somebody can figure out the funds, it's a lot easier to get things done. Uh, and the fact that now we have our uh, budget already formulated for next year, I don't know if there's any way, you know, obviously you can take a look at this, but if you could implement something to bump these up sooner in the year or not, I, I don't know. Uh, because of funding, and all the funding is, you know, in place for next year already. So anyway, that's just some of my thoughts. But, you know, if there's no funding for this, you can look at it, but then the thing is, is everybody that is in, you know, October, November, December, they got to wait another year. So that's about all I got to say. Like I said, I'm just, I'm not, I'm not trying to beat a dead horse here. I'm just trying to make a little, uh, uh, you know, a little awareness that, that, you know, a lot of people are having to wait till the end of the whole deal. And, 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 and it's great. You know, I think the whole wage package that went through is good and it's going to be great for a lot of people. And obviously the people that are in the first quarter of the year, it's better for them than it is for your long-term people. But I just think that maybe the long-term people are kind of getting lost in the shuffle a little bit. But we are appreciating what you're doing for us. So, thank you. Any questions for comments? Okay, thank you. Okay, thanks. Motion to close the floor. So moved. Second. Uh, forget it. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. That passes unanimously. Comments? Go ahead, Alder. From an action item. There's really not a whole lot we can do, but True. Uh, it brings up a good point. I'm curious if you know, engages with Joe or through a, you know something. I, I I don't. I'm not quite sure what can be done tonight, or even that we can talk about it in too much depth, because it seems to be an action item. So. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I think um, part of the from the common council as well. I think that. 1% being added in January 1, I think, was to help address some of these issues that they didn't have to wait until you know, December to get um, their uh, get a raise. And then I think um, that policy that we just changed to you know, 1% to 2% for a lot of hourly employees, I think, was to help with that concern as well. I know it doesn't help with uh, December, right. but I do think those, some of the changes I think the council put in place to try to alleviate the concern, which was the 1% up front early. But, and then there, I think if there's um, employees on here that are in the performance range, uh, there wasn't much that would be done for these, but I, I think there were some uh, mechanics that were gonna be adjusted with their step increases uh, throughout the year, and then also there might be some of the, the leapfrogging with the seniority and, and junior employees. So some of those may be impacted by this, but I'm not sure exactly who. So some I think will be impacted by this and won't have to wait until December. Is there a, I mean, is there, uh, have you guys talked about or contemplated? I mean, I know, you know, during the budget season, we said, gosh, if, if everybody's review were due at the same time, mm -hmm. right? Like, I mean, that would not be plausible, really, mm -hmm. for our directors. So, it, I mean, but what about, I mean, it's probably a little unusual to suggest, I mean, you know, a, a wage implementation before a review is done, you know? 
I mean, have you thought about something like that, though? We still do your reviews when they're slated, right? Mm -hmm. But maybe the wage kicks in for everybody at the same time. Is that even a possibility? Is that a bad idea? I wouldn't say it's a bad or a good idea. I mean, it's just, I mean, it's an idea, right? right. I mean, so I think right now our, our plan is set up where you have a COLA at some point, and then you have a performance review, and that's where you get your step increase. So that's where we're at right now. Um, I think some of the discussions was, I mean, we have these individuals at December 1, but you know, if we do something for them, what about the person at November 30th? Or well, that's kind of what 30th? I was thinking, right? So if you, if you were to, um, we knew this would be a multi-budget discussion, right? And so in my mind, I was like, but if you just took all those December people and moved them to January, and the next budget <coughs> takes care of them, but to your point, then the folks in November, I yeah. said, what about me? And then October, and then September. Yeah, so I mean, it's, you know, there's different options we can look at. Like I said, some people will be impacted by this, um, where they actually will have a step increase in January or June or April, but I just don't have those specific employees and who's impacted. Is there some kind of process we could look at to try and mitigate this moving forward? Because we're going to have budget every year, contract, uh, we're going to be running into some of the issues that you know we're, we're running into this past year. But when you're hiring people every month of the year, how do you shift them or move them around where it's fair to everyone? Or at least create a system so people aren't waiting 11 and a half months to get a raise that everyone else, or not everyone, but many people have gotten well ahead of them. I, I'm not sure, because if we moved everyone to December, well, then what happens with the next time with all the new hires? Um, but I think Alder Johnson, you know, makes some points that there's, look, it's, we can't be the only ones looking at this issue. And there might be somebody that's found a viable solution that's fair, or at least fairer, to everybody that's involved. And I guess uh, our job, especially if we're thinking about employee retention, is to um, look at those different things and, and see if there's something that we can implement or do to to help that happen. Yeah, I don't have an answer at this point. But, right. But yeah. yeah, I mean, and again, then there may be nothing out there, but I, I, I think it behooves us if we can take a little bit of time and, and try and look for some of these uh, solutions or things to mitigate, um, you know, someone having to wait 11 and a half months. Yeah, I think, Mark, to your point, Step one, awareness. I, I just always assumed that when we authorized a pay increase April 1st that everybody got it. I didn't, I didn't realize that it was. Well, everyone does. Yeah, the cola. Yeah. But just the cola. Yeah. Okay, but so what you're talking about is the, the step changes really yeah. with this. Yeah. 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 So when we were talking about the pay plan at the budget, I mean, these numbers are very aligned with what I said. People, it was around like 70 to 80, they'll be impacted in this interval one compared to. Um, other employees, but also um, that's why I think we did the one percent January one to help alleviate that. But also, some of these employees will be impacted by what we call the leapfrogging and, and things like that. So I think it's more probably going to be around like I think it's like fifty to sixty employees. I'm going to say. I have to wait the whole time. Mm -hmm. I think so. Man. I I think it'd be good to know that number. Mm -hmm. I mean, have it in our what the actual number is that leapfrogging will help earlier. So we know what actual number it's a December thing is, and I don't know if there's a way you can slide everyone in the last three months up, I don't know, um, just to make it more, you know, I hate the fact that the long-term employees are the ones sitting in December. That's really rough in my brain, because we want to retain those people. We'll have um, HR put together where people will be placed this week and next week, and we'll have those that information in the next two weeks. Oh, great. We'll have better information on where people are at. Yeah, I think we should keep considering this, because it was brought up every time it should have been brought up, and it, I think it, it's calling for a, a, an answer in some way. You know, in some way. Well, I don't know that it's even, you know, I, 
I think it's pretty transparent during budget season, just about every single alder mm -hmm. was confused about something <laughs> related uh, to this whole pay plan, right? Mm -hmm. and, and even I'm showing a little bit of confusion. I don't know if I'm solo in that. Um, oh, um, no, it's... Uh, about the, the COLA implementation. And, and so, um, so is this, uh, I mean, the, the, you know, the step grade, so what we're really talking about is a step grade change, right? Yeah. right. And is it, it's just anniversary date based? Yep, typically. Yeah, so a new hire that's hired at step one, um, six months from there you'll go to step two, and then from that date every year you'll go up to the next step. So, so in theory, if we were to change that, aren't we just shortening then the amount of time that someone has to wait for a step change while others still have to wait the full year? Yeah, I mean, that's what you'd be doing. The employees that, typically the employees in the performance range on December 1 will be the ones impacted the most, and those will be the employees you'd be moving, and you wouldn't be moving anyone else. So like if you're on like so I mean you're you're kind of cherry picking the people December one and moving them on closer. Yeah. Okay. I th I mean I again it's not an action item we can take tonight. I do think it would behoove all of us, and mm -hmm. I'm certainly volunteering to maybe sit down and get more educated um, <laughs> on that item. I don't know if I have to grow a mustache to be in that meeting. Oh. No. <laughs> <laughs> No, we can sit down and we have all the data and yeah. we can talk about it. I mean, maybe it would help. I mean, clearly you get it. Mark gets it. If you have a mustache, it helps. I think. mustache helps. <laughs> some helps your IQ by at least 20 points. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Motion to receive and place on file. Yeah. Second. second. You got a second? Yeah, I, I was always lucky. My, my step was always in June. The contract was always January 1, so I was like every six months, boom, boom, boom. But I could see if you got December, you, you'd have to wait all that while. So uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? That passes unanimously. And I'd adjourned. just like to say real quick, if uh, you're looking at the end of employment, uh, there's three good people leaving the PD this, uh, this December. Kelly Molitor. Brad Biller and Sue Petty. Sue has been in records forever, and she's been a rock, filling many positions there, doing a good job. Kelly, uh, she's going to heaven because she married uh, one of the ex-chiefs. <laughs> <laughs> I, I rolled with that guy long enough to know that she's a tough girl. And, and Brad Biller has been the, uh, the detective that's been working at our council meetings for quite a while now. But all good people, I'm sure. Uh, there's always someone that's going to fill that role, but they're they're going to be missed. So, my uh, my wishes for good retirement for all three of them. All right, next meeting is December twelfth. I think I heard a motion to second. adjourn. You got a second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 And we are done here.